Hi, this is Russell Thanner from teachertrainingvideos.com. This set of videos is going to show you how to work with Google Forms. It's going to show you how you can make quizzes with Google Forms, which allow students or people to do the quizzes and receive feedback. This is a more advanced feature in Google that they introduced about a couple of, well, about two years ago. And I'm also going to show you how we can also do make the quizzes a little bit more interesting by combining the quizzes with video content and pictures etc so very much an advanced set of training videos on working with google forms let's get straight into it so let me just try and compare the two ways of working with google forms so you can understand here what we've got is a questionnaire that i've created that i needed to do because i was trying to find out about some teachers and their background and what technologies they're using so i made the questionnaire i sent the questionnaire to the students which is very easy to do you just click on the send button and get the link and share it with the students and they filled in the questionnaire and then all the data comes back to me so i can see that there are 16 responses and i can click on those and i even get a summary of their answers which can be really useful if I'm say preparing to do some training and I want to know what technologies the teachers already know so it's very very useful so that would be uh, the typical way but this new way or not new it's two years old but we look at this one here this is completely different this is like a test so I can watch the video I can answer the questions let me actually just do it so you can kind of see all right and then I know I'm gonna get five points if I've got the answers wrong or right I'm just gonna put these ones down here okay and then I click on submit and it actually tells me what my score is uh, so this time as a student I get feedback and I realize right I got that right that first question right and here I got some feedback and then I got the second question when I got that wrong uh, and then etc so this is the difference between a data gathering type of survey uh, question questionnaire and a quiz making one where you actually get the feedback and what I'm going to try and show you today is how to do a quiz but I'm also going to show you how to embed a video in so you can do a quiz about a video etc so hopefully that's made it clear let's get started Okay, just want to make one thing clear before we start that's really important that a lot of teachers don't realize. Uh, when you do a quiz type questionnaire, you still get the feedback or the information as a teacher. So even though the students themselves get immediate feedback, you still get all the information. And I've got here a quiz that I've done and now 17 people have done that quiz. I can click here and look at their responses either as a summary or individually. So though when you make a quiz, the students get feedback on what they've done, you as a teacher will still be notified of when someone's done the quiz, etc. Right, let's get straight into it. So to create a Google form, you need to be logged into Google. You need to come over to your Google Apps, click on it, come to your drive. In your drive, what you wanna do is click on New, and then come down to More, and then choose Google Forms. Click on that, and it will open up your Google Form, and you can start. Now, one of the important things to remember is that this time you're doing it as a quiz. So the first thing you wanna do is come over to this button here on the right-hand side, click on it, choose Quizzes, and choose Make quiz I would leave all the default city settings as they are they're fine and then click on save now you're in quiz making format which is a different format a nice little trick here if you write the name of the quiz so I'm gonna call this one video quiz 2 and then if you click over here it will actually grab that title and use that as the name of the actual file as well and that's a really useful thing it just makes life a little bit easier now let's start to put our questions in so selecting that first area what we're going to do is we're going to have a video at the top so we're going to click here on the video add video and i'm just going to search for a video i'm going to one that i always use when i'm making these presentations uh, i'm going to just write funny funny presentation there's a video that i really love see if i can quickly grab it and I'm going to put that in there it is that one there I'm going to click on that and I'm going to select that and what I can do as well is click that and put it into the middle so I'm going to center align it I can just click on it again and make it a little bit bigger okay and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write the instructions and the instructions are watch the video so this is a really good tip all right watch the video and then you want to basically say and answer the questions below because you can't actually add quiz questions into a video the video is a block so you always have to add the questions underneath and I'm going to show you another trick now that's really really useful 
a lot of teachers say to me, but Russell, uh, when students answer the questions, I don't know who they are. Well, very simple way of doing that. Just click on the top bar again. Whenever you select something, as soon as you add plus, it will go underneath that. So I'm just going to click underneath, and I'm going to just add the question, which is here, short answer question. All right, so I'm not going to do multiple choice. I'm changing it to short answer, and I'm just simply going to ask the question, what is your name? And that will simply save the problem is your name okay and people can write their name in so a question mark there and that's dealt with that uh, just click you don't have to um, if you, you click away from it that's now ready now we got what's your name then watch this video now we need to add the questions underneath so select in this area in fact doesn't matter because we've already got a question here ready just click on that question and we're going to go with this we're going to go with multiple choice and the first question that I'm going to ask is going to be what does he drop on the floor okay so that's the question and I'm going to give a few options so I click here I'm going to put pens which is the correct answer I'm going to click here and I'm going to write computer which is not the right answer and then I'm going to put here lion because he's got a pet lion or, or a toy lion and uh, and the right answer is this one so how do, does the computer know what the right answer is well we click on the answer key once we click on the answer key, we can now add in the answers. So clicking on the answer key, we're going to tell Google what the correct answer is. So we're going to say that the correct answer for this one is pens. And then we're going to add the feedback. So if you've got the answer incorrect, you're going to, we're going to say incorrect. He drops pens on the floor. That's the feedback. I always in reality give quite a lot of feedback these days when I'm doing these types of things correct answer I'm just gonna say well done but again I, my tip would be to give feedback in fact one thing I do is if they got the answer right I give them one additional piece of information so uh, that's a little tip when I'm doing feedback but for the sake of time I'm not going to do that right we've got our first question all set up now I'm going to do one more so I'm just going to click here to add another question and we'll do another multiple choice question and this one will be simply what does he throw into the crowd okay and then the answer to that again we're going to put uh, a few options going to click on the first one we're going to say he throws in a book that's not the right answer going to click on the second one here and say he throws in a computer into the crowd he doesn't do that and then click number three he throws in a pen same thing again we've now done out second question we're going to come to the answer key what's the correct right answer well the right answer is pen and then we need to do the feedback so again just for sake of speed here so just done the incorrect feedback and then for the feedback correct feedback i'm going to say correct and nothing else in reality i would do more now one thing i forgot to do is add points so i'm going to come back again for this one here i'm going to give you five points if you get that right answered correctly answered. So i'm going to click on this one here and do the same thing here we are now finished We've got a quiz. This only got two questions. We've got a video, two questions, but we've also asked the participants to give us their names. We are finished. The quiz is now ready to share. How do we do that? Now, the easiest way to share a link uh, so that students can do the quizzes is simply to click over here and then to click on, sorry, actually, that's the wrong button. To click on send and come over to the link and you can actually shorten the URL and you can just copy it. So I'm just going to copy that URL there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what it would look like if a student actually did that quiz. So I'm going to open up another browser and paste that link in, and we're going to do the quiz. So I've got another browser opened on the screen here. Just going to quickly paste in that link. So paste it in. There it is. Press Enter. Now we're actually working as a student. Notice we've got to put our name. So we're going to write Russell. And then maybe I'll write my full name. Perhaps I should have said please put in your full name then I'm just going to answer the question to do it really quickly we'll do the first one and get it right we'll do the second one and get it wrong click on the submit button and we can view our score straight away and we can see we got five out of ten we've got the, our name in obviously then we've got underneath the first question in which we got correct and then the second question which we didn't get correct and that's how simple it is to make a quiz obviously you could make a lot more sophisticated one than that now I'm going to show you a couple more things to take it onto another level and also point something out that a lot of teachers don't realize so if you really want to learn for example instead of you uploading a video that you found on YouTube why don't you use one of your own videos I'm going to show you how you could do that uh, in the next part so if we come back here 
to the teacher's view, we can now see that there's one respondent, one person's answered the question. I can click on that person. I actually get here a summary of everybody's answers if I want to look at those. But if I want to look at the individual, I can see, right, this person was Russell Stannard and he got the first ancient correct answer correct and he got the second answer incorrect. So as I've said before, even though these questions actually give feedback to the students immediately all the data still comes back to the teacher one of the problems with this quiz at the moment of course is the fact that that video was a video that i found on youtube what about if i wanted to put my own video up and then add some questions underneath how easy would that would be to do well very very easily and i'm going to show you now how we can link a video creation tool and google forms together to really take it up to another level now I'm just going to turn off my webcam while I do this because there's so much technology going on now. I'm going to be using doing screen capture of screen capture. What I'm going to do is I'm going to literally turn this map into a learning video. So I'm going to be talking about some of the places in France. And in fact, what I've done here, I've got one image here. And if I move the, the image player forward, I've got another image here and another one here. So I kind of got three images. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something called screen capture to basically record myself talking over these different images so that they kind of turn into a video so I'm going to click on video I'm going to ch choose capture I'm using a tool called snag it I'm going to simply mark an area around here and that'll do and now I'm going to start my recording so I just click on the button there here we got France uh, major cities in France would be Paris uh, over to the right here Lyon and in the south, another big city in uh, France would be Marseille. In Spain, there are probably four big cities. Madrid, which is the capital. Uh, over here we have Barcelona, more or less the same size as Madrid. Uh, that's the capital of Catalonia. Another big city is Valencia, which has about a million people. And so does this city here in the south, which is Seville. And I'm going to move on to the last one. Italy has a number of big cities, but the major cities would be Rome. Uh, it would also be here in the north would be Milan. That's a pretty big city. And to the south, there's a fairly big city, Naples. That's another large city. So I'm going to click on the stop button now. And you see that that video is immediately ready. And I can even play that back now. So really, really easy for me to make this video and I can sort of go through it and just check that I'm happy with it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload that video onto YouTube. So I'm going to come up and just click on a button here that says, just make this a little bit smaller so that you can see it. So if we just bring that down onto the screen, so you can just see clearly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to bring, that's it. I'm going to click here on the button, share and I'm going to just share that video to my YouTube channel. So I've already got my YouTube channel, my Snagit channel connected together. So I'm just going to put here test video, test video for Google. And then I'm going to copy that and just use that as a description as well. And I'm just going to put test video as one of the tags. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, give me the URL because I need that URL. So it's when the video is uploaded onto my YouTube channel, remember I've already linked my snag it to my Google, Google account. So now all I need to do, and I'm going to set that as unlisted. All I need to do is upload that. Now, why am I setting that as unlisted? Well, I'm doing that because I don't want the video to be public. So yes, it will work inside of my Google form, but you won't be able to find this video if you were to search for it on, on YouTube. So I'm now going to click on the upload. Off goes the video and I can see it's been uploaded there. And after a few seconds, it's going to send me the URL. And that URL is going to be really important. I'm going to click on get link. So what I've done there is made a video and I've uploaded it onto my YouTube channel. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to link that into my Google form. So I'm back on my Google Drive. I'm going to make a new uh, Google form. So I click on new, more, Google Forms. And what I'm going to do is show you then how I could actually embed my own video and then make my questions. Now, you already know how to do the questions, but watch this. I'm just going to simply click on uh, YouTube and remember that they've already sent me that link. So if I actually click on URL and paste the link in of the correct video, there it is. The video is there and I'm going to click on select. And now, again, I'll just move that into the middle and obviously make it a little bit bigger. 
now I can start to create all my questions, but this time it's around a video that I've uploaded into my channel and then linked to Google Forms. That is really powerful, and that would allow you to make your own learning content, and then with that learning content to build quizzes around it, okay? I really hope you found that video useful. Please, if you've accessed this video on YouTube, please like the videos if you liked it, and please leave comments. Particularly, I'll be very interested in knowing of any other videos that you would like me to produce. One thing, if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, uh, just as an example here, remember to click on the subscribe button underneath, and then you wanna click on the bell, because that way you will be notified when new videos are coming up. Lots of free content on my website on teachertrainingvideos.com. At the top of the screen, we have all these kind of technologies and you can just click and learn about that technology. And there's Snagit, which I introduced you today in the video. Um, and then on the homepage, you'll also see that there's these more theme-based areas around flipped classroom feedback, teaching online, etc. And the last thing is if you really wanna follow what I'm doing, then please sign up to the newsletter it's very popular and i'll update you on any new videos that i've produced as well as any short courses i'm running any webinars i'm running and occasionally i get special deals on software and thank you very much